Hey guys, I just got the all new A to Z Typhoon Pro Nax to CCS adapter. This awesome adapter is gonna allow me to take my Ford Lightning back here to a bunch of the Tesla superchargers all over the country, and it's gonna change the game when it comes to road tripping. No more waiting for an EA charger to open up or wondering if it's gonna work at all. This adapter gives you ultimate freedom when it comes to traveling the US. I've done a couple trips already down to Vegas, Southern California, and I'm gonna tell you, this thing changes the game. Well, I already have one of those. What's the difference? Yeah, there's definitely uh, some differences. We're gonna talk about those. Uh, let's break them down together at a charger. Welcome to Bow Family EV. I hope you'll like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Let's go. Hey guys, you join me here on a windy California day to talk about the all new A to Z Typhoon Pro Nax to CCS adapter. Now we've seen adapters before, including the original Tesla created, Ford provided free one. Uh, that's been really great. I was really lucky to have this on day one of launch and it's a fantastic adapter, absolutely nothing wrong, but it is difficult to find and get. There's a lot of people waiting for this. So there was the awesome A to Z original adapter, which has served me well, and I've traveled up and down the state with this one, and it's been fantastic. But this one, after we gave some feedback, has had a lot of improvements made, and I'm excited to show them to you and kind of go over the difference on these different adapters. But first, let's show how this works. Let's plug it in and get some charge on the lightning. So now let's talk about how we use the adapter. So what you start by doing is just taking the adapter and plugging it into the truck all by itself. You'll hear it snap into place, and then you're gonna take your NAX cable and plug it into that. Now if you've got plug and charge, that's all there is to it. Your credit card on file will communicate with the Tesla network, charge the credit card with the that's on the Ford Pass app, and you're good to go. It's pretty much seamless. So if you're on a long road trip, we're going to be charging multiple times a month where you live on the Tesla network. It makes a lot of sense to do the monthly membership. And the way that's going to work is you're going to disable plug and charge on the truck, and then you're going to use your Tesla app. So we open up the Tesla app, and then we go to charge your other EV. Under that menu, it's going to show you a map of the local area, and you're going to be able to find the charger nearest you, or in this case, the one that I'm at. So then I'm going to select this charger, and it's the, going to say charge here. So I'm going to select charge here. And then it lets me choose whichever pedestal number it is. In this case, I'm at 3D. So I go over to 3D, start charging. And again, I've got a credit card on file with Tesla. It's gonna plug in, do the communication, and we're off to the races. And the great thing is it's super reliable. There's lots of options here. I've got 12 at this station alone. And it's really gonna give me some great charging consistently as I'm traveling and on the road, and it's not something I have to stress or worry about like I have with other charge point operators that we won't name. Let's take a look at how it's doing inside the truck. All right, guys, you join me here in the Lightning, and here on the screen, one of the big things that is missing is the charging speed. You see I'm already up to 48%. It doesn't take long to get a lot of energy here at a Tesla charger, uh, but it does say it'll be 430 uh, if I wait till 90%. Uh, I'm not really gonna do that. I'm just giving it a little boost. Normally charging to 80% is your best bet unless you really need that extra energy. But if I wanna see the charge speed, I really do have to rely on the Tesla app. You can see here on the screen itself for charging, sorry for the glare, uh, there is not charge speed data here either. But if I go to my Tesla app, you can see that I'm getting some really nice speed here at 158 kilowatts, uh, already 49%. So I really rely on the Tesla app or the Ford Pass app to give me my charge speed. And I get really consistently in the uh, mid 150s to the low 160s, which for the standard range is really good. It can get up to the 170s for the extended range. So uh, I really do uh, love that I can rely and depend on the superchargers to give me the kind of power I need. Uh, one other thing I'll point out here in the apps is there is a charge assist app. This is something that you can use to find local Tesla chargers around you. Again, this is a real gap in the navigation system that right now the native nav does not show you your Tesla superchargers. Neither does uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So uh, I'm hoping that they will update this because right now not having the charge speed and not being able to find in the native navigation uh, where my superchargers are is something that makes travel a little bit more clunky, cumbersome, and more difficult than it needs to be. So uh, looking forward to that update. Rivian has done a great job with it, and I'm hoping Ford follows suit very soon. So we're just going to give it a little boost here, and then we're going to unplug it, show you what that looks like. And then before we uh, finish off, 
we'll give you a little close up look at the three different adapters just so you can see some of the differences that we talked about before. Okay, now to stop charging, all we have to do is on the app, hit the button that says stop charging. That's gonna take and spool down the supercharger and allow us now to remove the adapter from the truck. So one of the great things about this adapter is unlike the others where you might have a button on top and a latch on the bottom, or you might have a slide on the bottom and the one on top. This one has just one nice elegant button right here on the top of the adapter. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna take with our thumb and press it down to the first level. That's gonna allow us to remove the NAX cable. So we're gonna do that first. Then you press down on it to the second level and the adapter comes right out. Simple and easy. That is all there is to it. And this is one of the reasons I really do love this new Typhoon adapter from A to Z. So now let's break down a little bit closer the individual differences in these adapters, because at the end of the day, they do the same thing. It's just a matter of preference and honestly, availability. Let's look at them together. So all the adapters pretty much work the same way. They're taking this NAX cable and they're just gonna convert it over to the CCS1 standard that we use in the Lightning, the Mach-E, the Rivians, all those types of vehicles that are eventually gonna be able to have access to the Tesla supercharging network. Let's start off by looking at the Ford provided Tesla created adapter and see how that one works. So this one is really simple. It's got a nice plastic shell to it. And again, it plugs right in and you can see underneath it is the latch. You can hear it has a nice snap to it. And then this is just gonna plug right in to the truck. It's got a release button on the top that is gonna release it from the truck. And then it's got a separate button underneath to release it from the cable. Pretty simple. Let's see how the original A to Z, a to Z adapter is a little bit different. So here you see the original A to Z adapter. Again, it's gonna serve the same purpose, but in a little bit of a different functional way. So in this case, it plugs in. And what's different about this is underneath it is a latch. This latch was commonly causing problems and confusion for folks. And if it wasn't slid just the right way, then you were not gonna have the communications pin enabled and it wasn't gonna start charging, people would get errors. So this was one of the areas we gave feedback on and that we thought could improve. There's also ones like the Electron, where the big problem there early on was that this connection here was causing a problem, causing it to come out when it was latched and shouldn't have been coming out and it coming across like that when charging, or even more recently, it would get stuck and you couldn't take it out at all when you were done charging and people were just leaving the cable there with an adapter stuck to it. Both are not great things to have happen with your $200 plus dollar adapter. So let's talk about how A to Z has gone the extra mile with the new one and made it probably the best of them all, in my opinion. So now let's look at the all new Typhoon Pro. Still has the great quality build, good heft to it. But what's really great here is that we've only got a single point of release, one button, which really simplifies things. So you press it a little bit to be able to connect and disconnect the NAX cable and all the way down to undo the pin from the trucker or the Mach-E. So let's see how this works with the truck. It's a little bit different than we've seen before. Instead of plugging them in now, we're gonna do them in a little bit of a different order. And I'm not sure that it completely matters, but this is what the instructions say. So I'm gonna show you how the instructions show us how to do it. So first of all, I just hit the zero here on the F-150, charge port door pops open, and it says to take the adapter, plug it in first. So now that we do that, and it's locked in place, I take the NAX cable and I plug it in here. It snaps in place, ready to go, and if you've got plug and charge, that's it. The truck's gonna communicate to the Tesla network, charge the credit card on file, and you're good to go. It's as simple as that, which is fantastic. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Thank <laughs> you.